Dr. J, welcoming you back for another video today. Today I'm going to talk to you about the ongoing comparison that we always have between a brain and a computer. And you know, people always say, oh, brain is the best computer in the world and the most sophisticated computer and so on and so forth. Now, computer, as we all know, works on electrical impulses. That is transmission of, of an impulse from one part of the computer to the other. And then, you know, that gives rise to the, all the functions of the computer. And for a long time, until recently, you know, when I was going to medical school um, in, in uh, early 70s, uh, we were taught the same thing, that brain works on electrical impulses. And impulses travel from, the, from one part of the brain to the other along the nerves, and then they carry on a certain function. That was the standard uh, procedure to follow and the standard knowledge. But however, in the last 20 years, this has changed dramatically with the discovery of something called neuropeptides. Neuropeptides, or neurohormones also as they are called, are chemical substances that are produced in the brain. And now, thanks to lots of researchers and um, uh, great people like Candice Peart and many other researchers from renowned universities, they are finding out that these neurohormones are not only produced in the brain, but they are also produced in other parts of the body, like your, like your heart and your lung lining and, and your intestinal lining and so on and so forth. Now, the importance of the neuropeptide is that it has a major impact on how the brain functions apart from being just an organ where electrical impulses influence the outcome. So the composition of the neuro, neuro hormones in the circulation will determine uh, your emotions, your behavior, your uh, logical thinking, your creativity, uh, all, all, the, all the important capabilities of the brain. The other important thing to understand is that the software in a computer can be changed. So today if you are using PowerPoint on the computer and tomorrow you want to delete it and install something else, you can do that very easily and the computer just works accordingly. However, softwares or the patterns of behavior and, and all the other things that are being installed in the growing brain in the uterus, once they are put in place, they are very, very difficult to change or to dislodge. So this is a big thing to remember that everything that goes on in the baby's brain when it's developing in the womb is more or less permanent and very difficult to change later on. Now at conception, any two brains have the same potential. Any two brains have the same potential. Experiences or exposure to the, to the stimuli or the influences from the outside world into the womb, into the growing brain of the, of the fetus will determine the kind of anatomy that this brain is going to have, the kind of physiology, and the kind of behavior that this brain is going to have. So that is why no two brains, no two brains are alike. Anatomically, yes, the forebrain, the midbrain, the hindbrain, the, the cerebrum, and the cerebellum, and the brain, they're all identical, they're the same. But two brains are not alike. Each brain is different depending on the experiences and depending on the kind of uh, uh, environment that the brain has undergone while in the womb. The final point in this video that I want to make is difference between stimulation and programming. And we in pediatrics, and even today, you know, until recently, I mean, I used to use the word stimulation. Uh, in fact, my book was called Infant Stimuli, which um, I think, now I think is probably not the right name, because brain is a very vibrant, it's a very active, is a very proactive organ. It does not really require stimulation. I mean, something that is processing information at millions of bits per, se per second, it does not require any stimulation. Brain requires programming. How you program the brain. So you really don't have to stimulate, but you've got to program. And proper programming of the brain, which starts really very early on during pregnancy, and through to the first few years of life is of critical importance for the entire lifetime of an individual. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video soon.